In this video, I'm going to talk about my process for working between Adobe Fresco and Adobe Illustrator using vector brushes. So here I am in Adobe Fresco and I'm just doing a very simple drawing just for the sake of this demonstration. So I'll add a few details here and a few layers as well. So let me add another layer, get sort of a green color here and fill that in on this layer. I'm just drawing this sort of leaf shape here, trying to connect that. Then I can just touch to fill it since this is a closed shape. And then I'll add another layer. And for this layer, I'll change the blending mode to multiply so that we have more of a shadow that comes through. Then I'll go back, grab my vector brush and make this shadow shape here and again, since I closed it, I can just fill it using that paint bucket tool. All right, so here's our very simple three layer illustration. Um, and then we have a background layer here, which I'm going to delete. Now, when you export this, just go to the export button here and make sure for Illustrator that you choose PDF, then click export and then open the PDF in Adobe Illustrator. So here I am in Illustrator and I'm going into my layers panel and I'm going to go to panel options and then check this last box here and just turn this up to 50. This way we'll really be able to see the thumbnails here. And this is important because when you bring a vector brush a piece of art from Fresco to Illustrator via that PDF export, what you have is all of your artwork on one layer. And then you can just turn down the triangle here and see what's inside of the layer. And what we have is basically a group for every layer that we had in our original Fresco file. And on the top, we've got the black line art that I did on one layer. It's a clip group. And if I open this and we look inside, we can see the clipping path and it is like a mask, but in this case, it's not really necessary that we have this. It's, it's a much larger border. If you select it here, you can see that it just encompasses the whole object um, and it's not actually doing any masking. But then I have every single stroke here inside of this group. And it's important to know that because each one of these strokes really represents a, a point where I put down my pencil onto the iPad and then picked it up and then I have an individual stroke here. So if I get my white arrow, I can see this and it is just like a blob brush stroke. I'll zoom in a little bit here. So it's a filled shape basically with a black fill and no stroke. So that's the top layer and I'll just close this up. The next group is important to notice because it has the shading that we uh, used the multiply blending mode on to sort of create this transparent shading here. And it's different from the clip group above. This is a group. If I go and look inside of here, then there's a clip group inside of it. And then we can see the actual artwork. Now, the reason it's important to know that this is a group here and it's different from the layer above it or the fresco layer above it is that this group has an appearance setting and it's the shaded target that lets us know there's an appearance applied to this group. This is the multiply blending mode. If I go into the appearance panel here and I click on this appearance target for this group, I can see opacity and 100% multiply. So this is how that PDF export handles the transparency setting, that multiply blending mode that we applied to a layer in Fresco. It encloses it in a group that has that transparent appearance. So it's not actually applied to the brush stroke, which is down here inside of the clip group. All right, let me close that. And now this third path here, because it doesn't have transparency and let me move this leaf over a little bit so we can see it. This is, if I select that here, you can see this is the clip group encompassing the background of the leaf and there's a clipping path, and then there's the path. And then also notice that the reason that this path is just one shape is because when I originally drew it, I tapped on the screen, drew the whole leaf without picking my pen up, closed it, and then I was able to fill the whole shape. And that's why I have one shape here. 
if I had picked up my pen multiple times as I was creating this, I would have a single shape for every one of those paths. So this is a little bit about the anatomy of a PDF that comes out of Fresco when you're using these vector brushes. So what I like to do here is the clipping groups are unnecessary or these clipping paths here, which you can see right here, these are not necessary. And when you're working on a more complex file, it's good to be able to get rid of these. So very quickly, what I can do is just select one like this by clicking in the empty space in the layers panel. And then I'll just go up to the select menu and same, and I'll choose appearance. So the only objects in this file that have no fill and no stroke, these clipping paths here, um, are just things that we don't need. And so I can go ahead, just hit the delete key to get rid of them. Now, what we're gonna see here though is clip group is still the name of this group, but there's no masking or clipping going on here. This is really just a group. It's just important to know that you can always go back and rename these if you want to. Now here, this layer here, the shadow on the leaf is different. We've gotten rid of that clipping path, which is good, but we don't wanna lose the appearance that's applied to this group. Otherwise, we're going to lose the transparency setting for this. Because whenever you ungroup something, any group appearance that you have applied to it just disappears. So notice with the group selected, and we can see it's got that shaded target. If we look in the appearance panel here, it's got an opacity setting of 100% multiply. So when I ungroup this, just command shift G to ungroup it, you'll see no longer does that leaf have that transparent multiply blending mode. I lost it when I ungrouped the first group. Now I can always go and apply it again here, but I just wanna undo that. Uh, so you can approach this as if you were just starting from scratch here. So rather than ungrouping here, what I wanna do is go down to the bottom here and target this compound path. This is actually the drawing right here. And then go into the appearance panel and we can see inside the group and this group, we have this compound path. So this is kind of how the appearance panel tells you where you are in this object. And then right here at the bottom is the opacity setting for this path. So I'm just gonna click on it and go down here and choose multiply and 100% is good. So now we can see 100% multiply. It is applied to this compound path. And now we're kind of getting this darker double effect, um, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this group here, select it, and then I can ungroup and we lose the extra appearance. And then I'm gonna ungroup again. Now what I have is just sort of a clean single compound path here with that 100% multiply blending mode applied to it. And so just by doing those few things, I've made this file a lot simpler. This right here, the leaf outline has to really function as a group because there's so many pieces and parts, but it's nice when I have just a single shape like this that's kind of off on its own. And then the same thing, when we go down here to this clip group, you can see we have gotten rid of the clipping path. So this really isn't a clip group, even though the name just still persists there. And I don't need this group and I don't have any special appearance. I'm seeing a clear target there. And when I click on it, just to double check, I can see the group has no special appearance. So all I need to do is ungroup this. So that's command shift G to ungroup. And now I've also simplified this. So it's just a single object here, just this green filled shape, this path. So when you move from Fresco to Illustrator, you do have to deal with clipping paths and transparency settings that aren't directly applied to the strokes that you applied them to in Fresco. So you definitely have some cleanup to do, but once you do this, you'll have a lot easier time working on this file in Adobe Illustrator. So hopefully in future versions, it'll be easier to work between Illustrator and Fresco. I've got another video coming up, so please subscribe if you wanna be notified about it. I'm gonna show you how I took a file that's more complex than the one we just looked at and just sort of apply that same process. This is a copy that I did of Matisse painting using vector brushes in Fresco. So stay tuned and please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll let you know when that tutorial is released.